The session film is back and we've got something a little bit special for you this month. We've travelled to Belgium and we are at a super exclusive syndicate which in the UK would be classed very much as dead man's shoes. Our guest for this session is Derek Harrison. He's an English born angler but he moved to Holland 35 years ago and he's been fishing this side of the channel for all of that time. He's 63 years old as I say this, so he's getting on a little bit, but he is keen as ever. He's a very accomplished angler and we are set to have a wonderful few days here with him. The venue is beautiful, Derek is a legend and I cannot wait to get stuck in. I love coming to new venues and as soon as I walked into Derek's swim this morning, not only was I greeted by his lovely old dog that I remember from when I first met him a few years back, but he had the kettle on ready for me and as we stood at the front of his swim, in front of us was a massive, well I say massive, lake of about 30 acres, but a very nice looking lake, plenty going on and we spent the first hour or so just walking around the lake. Derek reeled his rods in and we went for a wander and there was plenty to look at. The first bank we went across, we sort of snuck in between a few trees, the bank was quite high, and we just scooted along looking through a load of snags and whatnot. Didn't actually see any carp there. The wind was blowing on sort of onto that bank and it was actually pretty chilly. The swim Derek started in, you know, that was cold as well. And as we made our way round the lake, out the way of the wind, the temperature immediately changed. And pretty much every swim that we looked in that was off the wind, it just felt so much warmer and so much carpier. We continued our way round to the opposite side of the lake that he was actually fishing on when I got there and the difference in temperature was massive and if you were a carp that was where you were going to be. Eventually we came to a snaggy corner of the lake. Now this is an area that Derek said they'll come to when they spawn and the time of year we're in now that isn't going to be too far away so that's where we've chosen to set up. It looks really good, it feels really good and if I was a carp like I say that is where I would be. We are semi set up in our swims. We haven't got the rods out yet, but we are in position and I was given first choice of swim and that is something Derek always gives to his guest when guiding. He's not very happy about it because from what you've told me, this is the better of the two swims. Definitely, definitely. It's had some cracking fish out of here in the past, especially this time of year. Fish start coming in here to spawn. Uh, got to have a big hit this uh, session, mate. I hope we do anyway. You said that in the past, you've had Big but hits from big hits, massive hits. Uh, Danny were in here last year, and uh, I think he had about 28 fish we had between us, and a, f and a couple of 40s, and a 50. He had a 50 here as well. The lad went home really happy, like a chest cat. You had 35 out of this swim before, is that? Uh, right? About six years ago, I think I had him two nights. Two nights had 35 fish. It was just constant. It's all in the daytime. But it's not like that anymore, is it? Let's just get that. No, no, before. it's it's changed. It's changed. The water's come up uh, one and a half meters deeper now than what it used to be. It used to drain the water uh, off for the for the camping near here, but it's stopped. Then the water's come up at one and a half meters. It's a totally different ball game now. But a bit of luck and the carp gods. We're going to smash it, mate. We only need one. We yeah. only need one. And you're itching to get your rods out. Derek's been I, moaning now yeah. for the last half hour that he wants to just get fishing. Well, so. Well, that's what we're here for, to catch fish, aren't we? It is. So, cheers. Cheers, mate. We're going to smack and one I'll out. I'll let you be. Go yep. do your rods. I'll do mine. Success. Good luck. <laughs> I'm getting my rods in now. Uh, to get a ticket on here is pretty hard. It's a syndicate lake. Uh, I think now there's 40, 45 members, maybe. Some people have been waiting 10 years for a ticket on here. And they only give them tickets if somebody stops. Tickets come free, so it's... And nobody gives the tickets up anymore. Uh, some cracking fishing, fish to die for really, and uh, you, it's a privilege to fish here, it's really a privilege. But the, like it is, the older fish are dying off now and they introducing uh, new stock, they're coming on. So. But there's still some, still some beauties in here, some pearls, you know, uh, some crackers. 
This used to be three small lakes and they made it into one bigger lake. It's about five meters deep, uh, it's a sand pit. It's, no, it's, it's, it's normally a, a casting lake. Five years ago, it was just whack it out there as far as you can. But now it's more chuck them in the edge of tight fishing. And five years ago, it was just how far you could cast, how more you caught. First things first, as always, when in a new swim, when I haven't seen any fish, is to have a good dissection with the marker rod, and that is exactly what I've done. There seems to be a band of weed, sort of 30, 35 yards out, something like that, and beyond that, it seems to be nice and clear. It's a good depth, seven, eight foot, that sort of thing, I'd guess. A little bit shallow as you come closer into the bank, but I've gone behind the weed, and I've located two different spots. One of them, 10, 11 wraps, the other one's a bit further, but I'm going out on the angle, obviously, from my left-hand rod, so, Two spots, both just behind the weed, both in what feels like a good area. I imagine those fish are going to use that band of weed to travel around. And as I've already mentioned, I've got this big set of snags to my left. There's weed all around it and it feels pretty good. I've put two and a half kilos of bait onto each rod with the spom. I wanted to do it with a catapult really, or the throwing stick, but I run my stick over earlier in the car and my catapult I couldn't quite reach. So I've done it with a medium spom and that is because I don't want too tight a patch of bait. So the smaller the spawn, the more spawns you have to put out and the wider a spread you're going to end up with. And that is about that. The hard bit's done and all I've got left to do now is ping the rods out. I've always enjoyed my first night on a new lake and this is no exception tonight. There is a definite feeling of anticipation in the air between us and that has been fueled furthermore by a little look through some of Derek's pictures. He's caught some lovely old carp over the years and he's caught some lovely old carp from this lake too. Yes, Derek. 